Good morning, everybody, and welcome to a Board of Selectmen meeting on February 20th, 2024. Uh, this time it is completely via Zoom. And as always, uh, we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. All right, everybody. So as we normally do, we will start off with the... Um, there's no minutes for last meeting. Uh, we will be meeting next week on the 27th. So um, first Lechman's updates, it'll be about 30 seconds. Uh, uh, Fred, our next scheduled meeting is uh, March 14th. March 14th? Oh, okay. I thought we had in the 27th. I'm sorry. No, uh, we do not. Uh, but uh, we're gonna, the minutes will all be uh, done at that meeting. Okay, very good. All right. Um, just real quickly, uh, Saturday, uh, the hot chocolate in the park in Byron was very successful. Uh, a few people showed up there to learn a little bit more about what the Friends of Byron Park does. And we're gonna be meeting with uh, uh, Myrna and Tricia uh, in a couple of weeks to go over some uh, ideas that we have there and a, a pledge that we have on the table to uh, to beautify the park a little bit more. So um, more, more, more uh, on the tap for the uh, Byron Park and the Friends of Byron Park. So all good stuff there. And so if you haven't been there recently, it's just, uh, to me, it's the, the biggest hidden treasure of Greenwich. Uh, it's the most underrated park we have. It's just has, the views are unbelievable and it's, it has everything in that park. So uh, if you haven't been there lately, I highly recommend taking a trip down there. Uh, also, the uh, I got a call the other day. Um, we're going to be starting the 250th uh, American U.S. Uh, anniversary um, festivities for 2026. Uh, I know Lauren remembers it being in Greenwich in 1976 when uh, we had that uh, bicentennial and it was all over the country at Operation Sail in New York Harbor, but Greenwich had a very big celebration. And it's hard to believe that we're at uh, right around the corner from 250. So we're gonna be uh, having some event um, in May, I believe, and uh, more details will, will be coming, but it be at the uh, Greenwich Historical Society, putting together a committee, small one, just to start the preparations for that. It's gonna be a pretty big deal. So uh, more on that in the, in the coming weeks and months, but it's something to look, to look forward to. And as Ken said, the next meeting is the 14th of March. I had it as the 27th, so I'll, if I show up that day, I'll be alone. But Anyway, uh, thank you, and I'll turn it over to Lauren. Uh, thanks, Fred. No no updates, really. Um, we can hop right into old business, but you just gave me a flashback because my mother um, sewed me a uh, old-fashioned dress made of 1976 material. It said 76 all over. Now I got to find that photo. Uh, Central Middle School Building Committee, um, we have a packed agenda. We usually meet Tuesday mornings, but uh, we are meeting tonight at 6.30, and that's um, in person, uh, no hybrid option. Okay, thank you, and good morning, Janet. Good morning. So a lot in my office is happening as February draws to a close. The Sustainability Committee is looking ahead to its Earth Day proclamation that will be read on April 6th at Waste Free Greenwich's Rethink Waste Fair at Christchurch. At that time, the committee will hand out its second annual sustainability awards. Nominations are now being sought. Any individual who lives or attends school in Greenwich is eligible, with the exception of committee members, of course. Nominations should include a description of 150 words or less about how the nominee supports sustainability in our community, along with a photo and emailed to sustainability at greenwichct.org. The deadline is March 15th. Tomorrow, Wednesday, February 21st, from noon to one, the Greenwich Sustainability Committee will host a presentation and Q&A with Anne Hulick, the Connecticut Director of Clean Water Action at Round Hill Community Church. Anne will explore what PFAS are, how they affect our water supply and our health, and what Greenwich residents can do to reduce or prevent exposure. 
next week on Monday, February 26th at 11 a.m., the League of Women Voters of Greenwich, along with a number of co-sponsors, including the Sustainability Committee, will host a webinar titled Tackling Climate Change, the Importance <clears throat> of Finding Bipartisan Solutions. To register, please go to www.lwbgreenwich.org. On Wednesday, February 28th from 7 to 8 p.m., the Energy Management Advisory Committee and the Sustainability Committee will host a Zoom webinar titled Geothermal, the Future of Energy in Greenwich. The event offers an important opportunity to better understand the benefits of geothermal heating and cooling technology in reducing energy use and costs in the public schools and other municipal building projects. On Thursday, February 29th, from 10 to 2 p.m. in Town Hall, there will be an electric lawn equipment expo for local residents and landscapers to learn more about alternatives to gas-powered lawn equipment. More information about all these events can be found on the town's website, <clears throat> www.greenwichct.gov. And last but not least, on Wednesday, February, or excuse me, on Wednesday, March 6th, I will be attending the YWCA's Women Who Inspire Awards to applaud all of this year's winners, especially my colleague Lauren Raven and BET member Leslie Moriarty. But if for some reason you find yourself at home that evening, consider watching a debate for democracy, affordable housing in Greenwich. The debate is co-sponsored by the First Selectman's Youth Commission and the League of Women Voters of Greenwich. For more information, again, please go to lwvgreenwich.org. And that concludes my updates. Thank you, Janet. Yeah, and I, I was gonna mention that on the 14th um, that uh, I will be participating in that. That should be a fun night, uh, the democracy debate on democracy. And um, yes, I'll, I was gonna save it for the 14th to, to congratulate and honor our colleague, well-deserved and all the rest of the, the awardees, but uh, we're very proud of Lauren. And uh, a couple of things that you guys reminded me of. Um, we were up for a goal designation when we were talking about the environment. Um, it looks good. There was one thing I had a concern about. There was a statement. I think it had nothing that we that they wanted me to write that the town had really had nothing to do with our sustainability efforts. I thought it was a little bit on the wokeish side. So I um, I do not want to sign that, but I want to do whatever I can to get that designation. So I want to circle back with uh, with Beth Evans on that. Uh, so we're town's doing a really good job there. And then uh, also, I want to thank Jenny for sending over the 1970s article in the New York Times uh, about Greenwich and about, <laughs> about uh, the people in town, the, the, the attitudes, how everybody was really up in arms about how the town was changing for the worse. And there was lots of uh, long, long haired hippies uh, walking around Greenwich Avenue and the, the traffic was out of control. And they thought that the... Um, the small town field Greenwich Avenue was going away forever. So we had a laugh because it's 54 years later and we see some of the same comments. And I'm sure if you go back 20 years earlier in 1950, you'd see some of the same things. So it's just about managing change. Uh, I think Greenwich done a great job overall keeping the small town feel. And that's what we're trying to do uh, certainly every day here on this board and on all the other boards, committees and commissions, but it was, it was eye-opening to see the reminder that uh, if, if anybody wants that article, I have it uh, that Jenny uh, sent over. And it's, uh, it really puts things in perspective. So thanks, Jenny, for, for sending that over. Okay, now on to the, to the meeting. Um, old business, uh, we have the request for the referral of the Dorothy Hamill Rink Project to Planning and Zoning for Consideration of MI status, which is municipal improvement. And we have Luigi Romano here with us, Director of Building Construction and Maintenance. Good morning, Luigi. Good morning, Mr. Selectman. Good to see you. Yep, <laughs> good to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> I know uh, you've done tremendous work there and this has come so far uh, that we're all very excited. And you, uh, I know you want to report a good committee um, uh, vote and all the things that you've done there. Uh, you, you know, you mentioned this all last time, but just a quick um, summary of that. So the people who may not have been on last time could, uh, could get up to date on it. Sure, so uh, what we're proposing is um, a replacement of the rink building and the new rink facility would be relocated into a more Northern portion of the park where the existing baseball field is today. Um, has a 
wide variety of benefits to that updated location, including uh, some accessibility um, improvements and um, some potential improvements for solar capacity, things of that nature. The, um, the ball field would then be relocated to the south in an improved orientation, which improves the ball field. Um, that ball field would get some dugouts, some bleachers, and a little uh, pitching uh, area next to it. So some improvements along there. And then uh, an accessible walking path would be uh, constructed around the spring facility and the ball field connecting everything uh, within the park itself for pedestrian traffic. Um, all some highlights from uh, feedback that we received in the wide survey that we sent out park wide, or excuse me, town wide, and then a lot of people who uh, frequent the park responded to that. So I tried to take that feedback and as long with the uh, some other feedback from different committee meetings and uh, general public input all into consideration. So we think this uh, really does a good job of taking all that information and consolidating it into a plan that should be uh, the best for the people in town. Thank you, Luigi. Again, I want to just repeat what I said two weeks ago. Um, when we, we formed the Greenwich Baseball Foundation, uh, I think in 2004, 2005, uh, we had plans for a showcase field to because Greenwich, unfortunately, we had received uh, when we were awarded the uh, a tournament, a state tournament many years ago, and we had to play our home games at Cabetta Stadium in Stanford. It was kind of embarrassing. Um, what you've managed to do here is um, you've managed to improve Straza Field to get dugouts. We don't have dugouts in, in Greenwich, which is pretty shocking. Um, and, and you've managed to, to do that. Um, I mean, built-in ones, you, you've managed to improve the park, the residents there with a walking path around it. Uh, you've managed to, you know, address uh, en energy and sustainability with the new building. Um, you've managed just uh, so many things. And also uh, as far as the, the uh, Morlot Park, Eugene Morlot Memorial Park, uh, our plan is was always to to really enhance that. But many people would go to those baseball games or hockey games and not even know it's there. Uh, this is an opportunity to enhance it and put up a nice, some nice signage there, whether it's a brick and concrete type of a sign, but something there to show people what what those men did for our country, and you know also uh, a signage for some signage for. Uh, Sal Straz is Memorial Field there, a uh, great friend of mine that did so much for the town's baseball uh, program. And uh, all, of course, Dorothy Hamill Rink, which we, by the way, do have a anchor donor ready to go, just waiting for the approval from uh, from zoning. And, then, and, and the name would not be taken off. So people, before there's a rumor, there would still be Hamill Rink, but we would name the building itself uh, for, for the donor uh, if that goes through. And then also we, we had heard an idea from uh, our historical uh, society um, uh, devotees who really are always advocating for uh, you know historic structures to maybe put some signage there to let people know um, of what the, the oldest house in Greenwich uh, being just right down the hill from that. And so we're looking at ways just to, well, we have this once in a lifetime shot just to get it right. And this certainly is the first step of that. So I, I can't thank you enough. It's 1972 was a long time ago uh, when I skated there and it was just a slab of ice and it was done piecemeal, unfortunately. So that's the reason why it is the worst rink in Fairfield County. Uh, so our, our, not only do our hockey teams deserve better, our skaters and our town residents deserve better. So, and the survey you did that went out to, I think 2,100 people responded. Um, most of 90 percent were uh, really looking forward to this so again hats off to you uh i don't know if lauren i and by the way in two weeks uh the lessons last meeting uh the only feedback i've gotten has been very positive to get it done so um i know how i'm voting uh, uh on this but i'll let my colleagues uh, uh give their thoughts and then we'll we'll have a vote um, I, I really don't have anything to add, Fred, um, like yourself, um, just maybe some clarifying uh, type emails, um, but nothing, uh, nothing against moving forward. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to repeat what I said at our last meeting, um, just to 
remind our audience the process, and that is what the Board of Selectmen are being asked to do is simply green light the project to go to uh, planning and zoning. This is this is far from our stamp of approval of a final design. You know, in some sense, the work, I won't say it's just beginning, but it's, it's a new start. And I just want to remind everyone of that. Um, you know, so I am pleased as, um, as someone who is tracking energy use in town, um, that, that there are discussions and considerations for, you know, how to, how to make this a, a more energy, I'll say more energy efficient, not necessarily energy efficient, um, building. So that, that's very encouraging. I, I will say there are a lot of attendees, um, at this meeting, and nor normally we don't have so many attendees. So before we vote, are we are we going to open up the floor to comment, or what? What's the process? Sure, we absolutely can. I mean, um, as I said, it's, we've had the time since the last meeting to hear from people, and I've heard nothing but good things. And again, this has been years, and so it's not like we're going to find something out that we didn't know now. But ha absolutely, if anybody, I see some familiar faces, uh, names. There, if anybody wants to say something, please put your hand up. Um, and if not, I kind of know where the thoughts of some of them. But but anyway, uh, Sarah Gleason wants to say something. Sarah, you're on. Hi, everybody. Um, as a longtime user of this rank and currently a figure skating a skating coach since I was 15, um, yes, please approve. We have five Olympians attached to the building. We need, we and skaters deserve better than what we have. Thank you very and, much. And, and, and I was I was I was in the show in '84, which raised money for the current bleachers. So please, 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 let's not have it be another 40 years. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, 50, 50. <laughs> '84 was only 40 years ago. No, it's, the rank is 72, so it's really... Right, I, I know, but the show that I was in, I was talking about oh, four yeah. years ago. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm, I, I, I know how back to 72 yes, because it really, was, it really was a slab of ice. When yeah, I, 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 I recall that too. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Lucy Von Brockel has her hand up. Hi, thank you, Fred. Um, and I also would like to see this moving forward, although I do continue to have reservations about how this has been planned and that it's moving forward without complete buy-in from um, the community, from the RTM and the BET. I don't wanna see any more time wasted. Um, and I do think that there are some compromises that need to be considered. And we still do not really have a concept of what the cost is and how we're prioritizing this with other projects. The size is large. There are a lot of new amenities which are needed to some extent. We we really need to look into this. and I'm. Glad it's moving forward to PNZ because I think it's been stagnating in um, in the current way that it is, and I think PNZ can handle some of this, um, you know, some of the issues themselves. So, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Lucy. Appreciate that. And I did to, to your point. I did have met with some um, BET and uh, and RTM members, some new members too, and there there seems to be a lot of support to get this going and. Uh, I know we've had we've addressed every single issue so far, um, but certainly if you have any more issues um, and it's not or you haven't had it, you don't think it's been answered. Yes, you absolutely. Um, you know, you, the next stop is uh, planning and zoning. Um, but I think we're all on the same page. This should not be hanging around anymore. So um, and we do the cost. I mean, Luigi, can uh, you want to respond to. Uh, uh, to Lucy's concern about not uh, knowing what the cost is. I mean, we have seen an estimate. Um, I did mention before we have at least one anchor donor. Uh, we haven't reached out to a few other hockey people we know um, just yet because we, we don't want to get ahead of this until we get it approved. But uh, there is help on the way, Lucy. But Lu Luigi, did you want to um, clarify anything for Lucy as far as the price uh, tag? Uh, sure. So as far as the price tag is concerned, um, we were at the um, 17 million number a couple of years ago now when we did that first estimate with KG&D in uh, 2017. Obviously, costs have escalated since 2017. Um, we're in like the um, low 20s now, and um, we will certainly have some uh, more uh, clarity and um, 
refined cost numbers as we move through this PNZ process. Thank you, Luigi. Um, appreciate that. Uh, I know I see some hockey people there, but I know uh, what they're thinking. So anyway, um, appreciate that. I don't see anybody else. If I'm uh, I think Joe may have wanted to speak. I'm not sure if he did. I saw it go up, but I think it came down. Joe, you did you want to say anything? Joe Siciliano, the man who um, was is. Uh, I taught you how to skate, Fred, so you remember that. I'm, you, Can you hear me? <laughs> So, yeah, when you weren't when you weren't taking my beach guard, yeah. Well, you know, water's water, so um, whether it's frozen or not. So, so I just wanted to just uh, say say one thing, and uh, along with what Janet was talking about, we talked about you know the energy efficiency of the uh, having solar application, but the modernization of all of the refrigeration equipment will lead to some significant cost savings for the town. I mean, we're currently working with a compressor system. And, uh, and, in, and an internal environmental system that basically is 50 years old. So as we modernize the refrigeration equipment, the compressor systems, et cetera, um, it's like taking an old air conditioning and replacing it with a new modern rated air conditioner. It's, it's almost the same thing, but we will then be looking at a more efficient operation uh, for not only making ice, but also on the utility costs and the amount of, uh, and amount of the, the cost to to maintain the internal environmental uh, condition of the rink to make a, to have a have a good environment inside and to make good ice for skating. So uh, these are all the facets that we'll be looking at when we go ahead and work closely with the designers to um, to come up with a final product for the town. Thank you, Joe. Thanks for that extra information and clarifications. Yeah, it's it's certainly going to be. Uh, a lot more energy efficient and something that we're all looking forward to. But yeah, we're, as uh, my colleague said, we are green lighting this. Uh, and, you know, I'm personally fully in support of this, but uh, it's just one step in the process, but it's, it's, a, it's a big one. Um, so appreciate that. Uh, we don't see any more uh, hands. So let's uh, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Lauren, you're muted if you're trying to make a motion. Sorry. Uh, Lauren Raven, I motion that we approve the request for referring the Dorothy Hamill rink project to planning and zoning for consideration of municipal improvement status. Janet Stone McWigan, I second. All those in favor, Fred Camillo's a yes. Lauren Raven, yes. Janet Stone McWigan, yes. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, uh, thanks, Luigi and Joe and everybody else, Sarah and Lucy, for your comments. Uh, now on to the next order uh, item on our, um, under old business is the presentation and discussion of the Outdoor Dining 2024 Board of Selectmen Guidelines. And Ben Brannion, our town administrator and COO, is with us. Good morning, Ben. Ben is not with us, but um, uh, no. uh, Patrick Leroux here is, is here if there's any questions. Oh, hi, Pat. Sorry about that. That's right. Ben is a uh, Ben did say he's away for a couple of days, but um, Pat, uh, uh, we I have not heard anything um, pro or con since our last meeting with this, but uh, I'll, I'll certainly ask my colleagues about uh, if they've heard anything. But is there anything you wanted to add to this? Uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, I don't have anything to add. Uh, I have also not received much in the way of comments except for supporting a shorter a shortened uh node season so um or the in in street seating so um that's the only thing i can really add to 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 this board right now yeah thank you and, and we i did hear from um Alyssa Kalishin Bonanno um who supported uh last time what we were doing here for that same reason and as we said we want this from the beginning we were going to evolve this every year to see how it worked out the year before. And we, the first two years, people went right up to Christmas. The first year it went all through the, during the pan, the first year of the pandemic, it went all through the winter, but next year it went up to, you know, to in December. But the last couple of years, we've noticed that uh, early November, they start taking them down themselves. So in anticipation of the holidays, we figured let's, let's end it early November. And see, you know, if we get a warm November and we get complaints, then we'll take into consideration next year. But I think it's a perfect time to shorten it up a little bit. 
and uh and we'll we'll you know, take it one year at a time but uh that's the only feedback i heard um i do hear feedback of starting later and i think we talked about it <clears throat> at the last meeting instead of starting um april 1 start closer to may um so i don't know if there's any you know wiggle room there if we want to start April 15th or, you know, whatever, whatever that right Monday is a little bit closer to May um, rather than going full all the way to a May one start. Also the feedback on making sure that <clears throat> the outdoor dining is um, ADA accessible. Um, so I don't know what we put into our regulations, Patrick, or, um, you know, how, how we go about um, either requesting it or enforcing it. Uh, well, so the ADA that is a uh, it's a federal law, but it's through the building code. So uh, we have references to it in the real zoning regulations for outdoor seating. Um, but again, compliance with that is going to be in consultation with the building department or the building official. So um, there is um, it is not an art. I mean, is an art is not a science. To, to doing those things, especially given the, the topography of Greenwich Avenue. So uh, we, uh, we we try to make sure that everybody has the ability to sit outside, uh, but sitting in the node uh, specifically may not be something that can be done given all those circumstances I just mentioned and others. So um, there there is compliance for outdoor seating, but, you know, it's not necessarily, you know, I don't want people to think that uh, the nodes are, ADA accessible everywhere because that may not be the case depending on the circumstance. I probably saw the same email that Lauren did about starting later, um, which, you know, we maybe that's where the trend we go. But I think I appreciate for now that this is an iterative optimization exercise and that, you know, we make these changes sort of incrementally. Um, from year to year, so so at, at the moment, I'm I'm fine with what what's being proposed. I think we have a hand up. Uh, yes, uh, Alan, uh, would you like to speak? Uh, yes, I would. Thank you so much, Ken. Uh, first of all, it's not just access into the node. Uh, Alan, can you just identify yourself formally for the record, please? Hi, I'm Alan Gensberg. I'm the chairman of the First Selectman's Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities. Uh, so, number one, it's not just access into the node. It's a table at the node that's high enough for a, a wheelchair to sit in. Uh, number two, sidewalks have to be clear. The tables on the sidewalk uh, just don't really work. And then A-frames, there are A-frames everywhere. And, and those impede the, 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 the safe transport of individuals from, uh, from one end to the other, whether they're in a wheelchair or they're blind. Uh, or, or, so, it, it, you know, it, it, is a, it is a science. It's not an art. There are regulations. It's not a loosey-goosey thing that we can make, make up here and there and say whatever. And if you can't get an accessible node, why should why should we give you one? Why have one if it's not accessible to everybody? Uh, I, I'm a little disappointed by all of that. That's my comment. Thank you very much, Alan. And Peter Alexander has his hand up. Good morning, Peter. Hold on, Peter, I'll recognize you and hold this one second. Peter, is this about the outdoor dining, or is this about a different topic? I uh, I think a graffiti contest would be wonderful. That's all. Thanks. Okay. Must be, must be the barriers. That. Must be the barriers. Yeah. yeah, the barriers. Yes, that's we've put something out on that uh, for um, to get back some responses, and then we'll uh, be making a decision on that. We want to get those looking a little nicer, but nicer. But I don't know about graffiti, but. Uh, We'll take a look at all of them. We have a, a Karen O'Neill, uh, who I believe was you to speak. Hi, Karen. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, great. Um, Karen O'Neill. I live in downtown Greenwich. I also grew up in town. My parents still live here. 
Um, you know, I've seen the evolution of the outdoor dining and I've commented previously about, you know, how little we charge for this privilege. It's the most expensive real estate probably in the state of Connecticut. And, you know, we undercharge for parking on our primary street. And we also undercharge the amount of hours. You know, if you see people, if you're ever over the avenue, you know, five o'clock, people are looking at the meters to check the time because most towns similar to ours, especially with downtown dining, will charge, you know, until eight or nine o'clock. Um, they also may charge, you know, Sunday noon until five, you know, after church is over. Um, and we don't. And given that, you know, I was over there on Sunday, it was super busy already. And it's a holiday. Private and public schools were off this weekend, you know, for an extended weekend. And I think it's a real a real challenge. And I think if we charged more or an additional fee, that it would help us for enforcement because enforcement was minimal. The amount of trash these things collect. I walk my dog on the avenue. We're constantly dodging glass. And, you know, Fred, you have dogs. You know, it's broken all over. It's a mess. And I think people should have to make a business decision for our business, given the cost to set up and remove and maintain, because most of them don't maintain. You know, I know they're supposed to maybe pull seats from inside to outside, you know, all this stuff. And it seems we don't have the enforcement capacity to allow this. So if we're going to allow it, we have to find the money for the enforcement. And that also may help with the ADA. And I think if we charged, you know, a fee, you know, there's a thousand dollar fee or something whatever, you know, we'd have to figure out the number, it may help with both the ADA enforcement, the cleanliness enforcement, and whatever other restrictions you come up with for, you know, how it has to be designed. But, you know, we're giving away stuff for free. Town's getting more crowded. We have all these, you know, buildings potentially under construction near town. So I think we want to get ahead of it. So um, I just like to throw that in the mix as things I think not just for dining, but also may help with our parking situation as well. Karen, thank you so much. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, the first year it was for free um, because of the pandemic. It Then we went to the 25% and then we're up to exactly all lost revenue in that. We actually also increased the uh, cost for the barriers this year. Um, so we, we're not losing any revenue at all. But you bring up a point that... Um, the parking, which you bring up a point that Deputy Chief Gray always brings up, that uh, we uh, we may not be charging enough for parking uh, itself there. Um, you know, we don't want to discourage for people from coming. So it's a, it's a balance always. But we continuously look at what you're saying. And we've increased those fees each year to the point where we are not losing any revenue with the parking stalls. And we've increased the uh, the cost of the barriers. Um, but we're going to keep looking at it and we want to make sure it's fair for everybody while not discouraging outdoor dining. We don't want to make it cost prohibitive either. So it's, it's a balance, but, but if, certainly, um, you know, we hear what you're saying. I know deputy chief gray hears what you're saying. Um, but, uh, we'll keep at it and, you know, thank you. But for if, your, if you extend the hours for parking yeah. that increases the cost per space. Mm -hmm. But the other thing you have to think about is that, you know, we don't want to only be dining on Greenwich Avenue. We want to encourage stores to continue to come because it creates a vibrant community when you have both dining and shopping. Mm -hmm. And right now we're very heavy on restaurants. It used to be more limited because I think we used to limit the amount of um, liquor permits in the per block or whatever it was um, when we were younger. So I think that we have to really consider, you know, we are giving real estate, like, you know, the amount of rent they pay per foot, you know, it, it's considerable and you have to include that and it makes it hard to see it's hard to get in and out you know you have to you know think about it from kind of the the higher level um thought process and that you know it's a sacrifice for the shop that may be next door to the restaurant and if you look at you know four o'clock you'll see the workers from the restaurants parking on greenwich avenue and then walking to their restaurants because they only have to pay for the hour and then at five o'clock, that space is free and clear, and they're not maybe using the back lots that we traditionally would encourage um, people to park in. So I just think we have to be very, you know, concerned about that because um, you're giving real estate at a severe discount. You're allowing them to expand their footprint yeah. at a discount to market, and I think yeah. that's important. Yeah, no, you're absolutely. I, so you're I, so your the point. Just let me finish real quick. Um, we've done that. We continue to do that, Karen. Um, 
when we, even though we all love it and it's proven that it's very popular, we still did a survey a couple of years ago to make sure we were not just being blinded by our own personal likes and it came back very popular. So with that comes trade-offs, right? So yeah, we are, we're well aware of, you know, we're, we're trying to fix parking where we're, you know, we've increased uh, some spaces and 15 minute spots and we're trying to still get something where it's built into the grade, maybe at the board of education, we're looking at other, other uh, surface parking lots to see where we can build into the grade to get more parking downtown. That's always, it's been, a, when we grew up here, that was an issue. It was before our time, it was an issue. So that's never going to change. This didn't help it. Um, and that's why maybe shortening up the, the like we're doing this year, a couple weeks, uh, will help. We'll see how that works. But um, yeah, it's it's certainly there's trade offs, and people seem to like there's more positive than negative with this. And I, I happen to be in that camp. But certainly, we continue to look at everything uh, each year. That's why each year it's evolved. And we've heard from at least one restaurant owner who was not happy that we have increased the fees. But um, at the end of the day, she agreed that it was fair. So. I see, but thank you, Karen. That's I'm glad you brought it up. And Patrick has Pat Laroa has his hand I, up. I, I just wanted to oh, um, uh, just give some feedback because I know every time um, the parking services comes to us to talk about fees, I do mention um, increasing the time. Um, so I am in support of looking at uh, increasing the length of time we collect uh, parking fees for sure. I've been bringing it up probably for the last couple of years. So I'll pursue and continue to do that. And I, and I would also, I would support what was just said that we shouldn't just be looking at lost revenue. We should be looking at market rate. And last year, Ben Branion did a very rough analysis of what he thought, you know, market rate per square foot might be. I definitely think we should be visiting this at least next year. You know, like I said, this year, if it's an incre incremental process, let's see what happens this year. Um, but definitely in future years, I think that we should be thinking about going beyond just lost revenue. And it's, again, it's not, it's not to look at this as a revenue source, but it's really about trying to get the economic balance right, you know, between parking and dining and other businesses on Greenwich Avenue, because we're trying to balance the needs of all of those things. Well, well said, yeah. And again, we've been, we're looking at it every year since 2019, 2020, we've looked at it every year. We stated in 2020, we would continue to look at it every, we'd have to look at it every year to try and this, you know, we love the outdoor dining, but we want to make sure it's as fair as, as possible, humanly possible and as equitable. But again, it's, it's, it's going to be an evolving, you know, the next several years, it's going to be evolving, but certainly um, that's why we put the survey out there so that just not our eyes are lying to us, but we wanted to hear from people also. And it, it certainly backed that up. Pat. Thank you, Fred. Uh, I just wanted to comment. Uh, we are not signing off on outdoor dining situations that don't have ADA solutions to them. So I just want to make sure that's clear. Uh, I probably said something that was ineloquent and that's not what's going on. Uh, I agree <laughs> with Mr. Gunsberg that access on the sidewalk is paramount. Uh, and that is why it is not, um, you know, it is, is something that we look at very, very closely, you know, the distance to pass by. Uh, I think when he was talking about A-frames, we're talking what we refer, we refer to as sandwich boards or temporary signage on the sidewalk. That is a violation. Uh, we try to get to those as much as we can, uh, but they are, um, you know, they are lower priority, obviously, than health and safety issues to buildings and structures and other issues. So we we do our best with the limited resources we have. Uh, you know, we've we've tried to put another position in the budget for enforcement for situations like this and a myriad of others. So uh, we are trying to make sure that we are on top of it and educating all the operators. Um, I think it's fair to note that this is really the first year that we are starting uh, ahead of schedule to talk about outdoor dining and not under state executive orders. So um, last year we we did this and it it lingered on until the spring because uh, it took a lot of uh, effort on, uh, quite frankly, the applicants to get their nuts and bolts together to operate uh, and install the and allow us to install those um, nodes in the street. So. 
Uh, most of the outdoor dining wasn't installed until end of May, beginning of June, uh, probably with the middle of June being when everything was out there, what I would say, you know, what we all typically understand as being the full season. So um, it is a work in progress. Uh, we know our shortcomings when it comes to some of the, the issues. We, we're going to work to address them sooner than later. We are, we're constantly trying to educate operators about their responsibility and what's the acceptable operating uh, procedures because if you know most of them will know if they know they want to follow uh, and those who don't or ignore will be um, you know th there's consequences so you know and not having a node is one not having outdoor dining is another so um, you know we're, we're not um, feckless in, in the matter but again we are trying to set this up for success and not failure. Thank, thank you, Pat. Okay, before we go on, Karen, I don't know if you're you want to say something again, or you just left your hand up there because I do that all the time. I forget the low. <laughs> Sorry, I do that all the time. Um, thank you, Karen. Okay, um, I don't see anybody else with their hands up, so I guess we can entertain a motion. Uh, Lauren Raven, I motion that we approve um, the uh, requested action to allow public parking spaces to be utilized for restaurant outdoor dining consistent consistent sorry with the guidelines outlined in our document janet stone mcwigan i second all those in favor fred camillo is a yes lauren raven yes janet stone mcwigan yes okay thank you thanks everybody for your comments and uh, we'll go forward and uh, keep uh, monitoring it as we go along Okay, on to new business, we only have one item and we have a request from the Greenwich Hibernian Association for the March 17th, 2024 St. Patrick's Day road closure for the parade. And our friend Jude Collins from the Hibernians are here, is here. Hello, Selectman, how are you? Good to see you, Jude. You too. So we're, we're requesting um, as usual, but I think this year we need to have an official uh, road closure. Uh, the parade will leave Town Hall. It will go northeast on Field Point Road, make a right onto West Putnam Avenue, go down Greenwich Avenue all the way to the bottom of Arch Street and Museum uh, Drive. Uh, the parade starts at uh, 2 p.m., but I believe your police like to uh, shut it down at around 1, and it usually ends around 4 p.m. That sounds about right. It's always a great day and hopefully we'll get some nice weather for it. Uh, so thank you, Jude. Um, yeah, so we're, I think we, you know, we have another meeting before this, but I think this is time sensitive and we know how this goes. Uh, we want to make sure all the logistics are in place and the police and everything. So uh, I think we should be voting on this today uh, to give you the, the go ahead for it. But uh, I, I think we're all in agreement on that. So I guess we'll entertain a motion. I could just say, is there a motion to close the road? <laughs> one to four on... Yeah, thank you. Uh, Lauren Raven, so moved. Janet Stone McWigan, I second. All those in favor, Fred Camillo's a yes. Lauren Raven, yes. Janet Stone McWigan, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jude. Thank you. Okay, see you on the 17th. Yeah, yes, thanks. Okay, thank you. So we, um, I don't see any hands up for public comments if there is going once okay um any uh, nominations uh i i do want to squeeze one in um sure. i motion that we nominate mary shaw marks uh to move up as a regular member of the historic district commission position r4 for a term expiring october 31st 2026 Janet Stone McWigan, I second. All those in favor, Fred Camillo is a yes. Lauren Raven, yes. Janet Stone McWigan, yes. Thank you, Lauren. Okay, uh, I think that's it. Um, barring no other business, is there a motion to adjourn? Lauren Raven, so moved. Janet Stone McWigan, I second. All those in favor, Fred Camillo is a yes. Lauren Raven, yes. Janet Stone McWigan, yes. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Jenny. Thanks, Don. Uh, appreciate it. Stay warm out there and we'll see you soon. Thanks everyone. Thank you.